This is the fifth generation R-badged Golf model, now just called Golf R, as it's been called for quite a while. And in this case, finally a stepping stone beyond what a normal Golf is. This is now kind of like Volkswagen's Audi RS3, but with a four cylinder engine and not a five pot. This is actually a stepping stone to that car and no longer just kind of a clone of the Audi S3. It's now very much its own thing. It's been a while coming in Australia. It's not gonna start arriving into customers until late April in 2022, but it's finally here and we've gotta be happy with that. We're one of the three biggest markets in the world for the Golf R, and so we kind of get a little bit of what we would prefer. So in this case, it means we get an international engine tune for the Golf R, as with the Tiguan R, which means 235 kilowatts, 400 newton meters, and just a three-way catalytic converter, not the petrol particulate filter that would be fitted to the wagon that gets 20 newton meters more. That's because it's a Euro tune, and this is our international car. Now, because we love our Golf R's absolutely loaded to the brim, this car comes with everything. As good as it was, no one really wanted the Golf R grid edition of the old 7.5, the stripped out, cloth seated, manual base model. I thought that was a ripper, but people want everything, and this is what you get. You get a standard R performance package in Australia, which means you get these 19 inch Estoril alloy wheels. You get the Golf R branded brakes, which means 357 millimeter cross drilled and ventilated front discs with those two piston calipers and those blue caliper painting, 310 mil ventilated at the rear, 20 millimeter lowered suspension over the normal Golf. And it also has adaptive dampers with multiple modes as we shall discover in the car and on the track. At the front here, it's really quite distinctive. This is with the lights in Parkers. So this is what you see at night time. You get this full light band that runs all the way across the front of the car. It has a little blue piping rim that runs along the top of it here. Blue being the signature color for Volkswagen R and this being Lapis Blue Metallic, the hero color for this car. Gets a new generation of R branding here. When the LEDs are running normal, they just have this section lit up brightly and not that in the middle. But at night time, the whole front is lit up, giving this car a face that is really distinctive. The whole front bumper bar section is also new for the Golf R with larger venting than the normal car. Unlike the Tiguan though, this doesn't have too much chrome embellishment. Other than these matte mirrors, again with sequential blinkers like the Tiguan, I forgot to mention it has these Matrix LED IQ lights that block out patches at night time. You leave the headlights in auto and they do an excellent job of lighting up country roads in Australia. Again with sequential blinkers. Down the side here, it's just about being a bit sinister. So color coding, matte black, all that sort of stuff. Quite cool sills along the car. It definitely has a stance about the Golf R without actually changing any of the paneling. These guards, front and rear, are as per any other Golf model, this is all in the detail embellishment and as we shall discover, what's underneath there. That cool lighting signature continues at the back here. You can really tell a Mark 8 Golf R just by the detail on these lights, again with the sequential indicators. And it has this really cool light show when you unlock the car, puts little R logos under the road and lights itself up at night time, which I think adds an element of chic to it. I certainly really like it. What really defines this though is what's underneath the back end. No longer gets the Howdex all drive system like the Audi S3. It has the same twin clutch rear diff that can send up to 100% of drive with its torque vectoring rear axle to either outside rear wheel like the Audi RS3 and like the new Tiguan R. But this is definitely a stepping stone for Volkswagen between a normal GDI, even though the GDI now has 180 kilowatts and is hardly normal, to something far beyond that. Inside here, we have similar level of golf practicality as before. It has a 371 litre boot, which is beautifully trimmed has a 60-40 split roll backrest with a ski port in the middle. But what you don't get is the dual height floor because in this car, we have the optional Harman Kardon stereo, which has been removed as standard on Australian cars to keep supply going. But this car has it fitted and it's really good. This is the subwoofer for it. And that means that that floor just stays there. But that's still quite a lot of space. If space is an issue in your Golf R, however, you do have the option of paying $3,000 more and getting a Golf R wagon, which gets an electric tailgate, 
unlike this. The R treatment inside the Golf R goes a little bit further than what it does in the Tiguan R. There's a lot of equipment that is shared, like this sports steering wheel here, nice chunky rim, blue stitching around it, perforated sections where you put your hands, and these sort of oversized anthracite wheel paddles where you can hold the left one down, and if you hold it a bit long, it'll go to the lowest gear it can possible. Little performance things like that. You do have these capacitive button panels across here, which are kind of a love it or hate it thing. You do get used to them after a while and they are easier to use over time, although I'm still confused about which screen scrolls through what over here with the OK and the buttons there. I can never quite get what I want and I've been living with one for quite a bit now. It's nowhere near as easy as it was in the past. You do get an R button though on the steering wheel and when, as soon as you hit R, you get the full gamut of what the Golf R now has in its drive modes. Comfort, sport, race, drift, special and individual. Comfort is not default, you need to choose that. Sport is what it defaults to every time. It has race as well which sort of amps up the engine sound and stiffens it up again and then you have drift and the others. If you do them through the mode here you need to depress them twice if you're going to get the whole lot. Whereas if you press the R on the steering wheel it goes straight to that so you know. Um, it is helpful. Um, it's something that you don't really bump, unlike the uh, steering wheel heating button over this side. It doesn't have the same Volkswagen logo in the centre here as the Tiguan. It's sort of indented, and while it is, I think, the new shape, it doesn't look quite the same. But what it does a lot better than the Tiguan is add a level of expense to this driver cockpit here. This has a whole bunch of configurable screens and different colours depending on which mode you choose. Each mode has a different colour for the colouring all across here. And you do get kind of used to it over time, I suppose. This works a lot better and looks a lot better than the Tiguan, but this still takes quite a lot of getting used to. I'm not going to whinge about it too much. You do get used to it over time, but the processing power isn't strong enough. I drove a new C-Class recently and it was just bang, bang, bang. And this does take a little bit of a while to warm up. What the Golf does bring though in the Golf R is wireless charging down here. Though, at night time, where it's got the little light here, it does reflect the colour of the light that's here on your phone. You can see that in your eyes the whole time. You can put that little flap down over the top to cover it, which is probably why it has that flap in the first place. It has two USB-C ports here. The optional stereo that's fitted to this car is the Harman Kardon 12-channel, 10-speaker, 480-watt system with that subwoofer in the boot that we saw before. It sounds really good. Just get it. Don't know about the sunroof though, I don't think the Golf really needs it. I feel like having a solid steel roof and the rigidity benefits of that match perfectly with these beautiful huggy Napa leather seats. These seats are so much better than the Tiguan R's which are just sort of more about trim and look. These actually hug you and I love them. And like the Tiguan, they have seat cooling. So you have to push that button there and then bring the seat cooling up, but it is still available. And the fact that it is available is the reason enough to want to buy one. The rest of the interior is pretty much the same as a Mark 8 Golf. It's fairly minimalist. This Innovision cockpit, is, which is what Volkswagen calls it, sort of inspired by the Innovision one in the Touareg, which is that huge expanse here. It's much reduced. It does give a nice level of minimalism. Things like the speaker volume where you can slide up and down, you do get used to over the time. You also have that on the steering wheel here. They all work quite well. The rest of the utility is as per any other Golf, which means great door bins carpeted here. You've got no longer proper grabs in the front here. You've only got this grab here, but at least it's something. You've still got the little window down in the corner there. You have that really deep cowl and that lookout. You can get this seat really super low. It has three setting memory adjustment down the side here. We've got two cup holders here with a little flicky thing there to sort of squeeze around your coffee and the world's greatest armrest in the center here. It has multiple adjustments and blue stitching because we're in a Golf R. Since at least the Mark 7 Golf, the back seat of a Golf has been a really good place to be and this Mark 8 Golf R is no different, although it does carry over some of the stuff that has been criticized about the Mark 8. For example, we have quite hard plastic around here with the center air vents with their own temperature control and two USB-C ports down there, but there is definitely a lowering of tone in the back here. Like, all of this stuff is vinyl, even though you do get the two little smartphone pockets and a pair of map pockets. The doors are rock hard and don't have the same slight amount of cushiness that the front doors do. So that's a little bit 
kind of disappointing, I suppose. If it's going into the engineering of the car, great, but I suspect that given that it's across the entire range, maybe not. The back seat trim in this is also not the same as the front. The front is that beautiful perforated Napa leather. Here it's just plain trim. I think it's still leather, but it's certainly not leather in that little bit there. This is leather because that doesn't feel like it at all. That feels like that. So yeah, not quite the same. It does still get the cool carbon fiber edging and stuff, but the seat itself is great. Awesome lumbar support, really good side support, nice under thigh support. This seat is as low as it'll go and I've still got a bit of toe room, I've still got quite a bit of knee room and without a sunroof I've still got quite a bit of headroom. These seats do sit a little bit in your way, this tombstone style shape, but there's still loads of vision in the back here and even this centre seat is still comfortable. So like any modern Golf you can still arguably fit three adults across the back seat of a Golf R. We don't have the proper door grabs used to of the past. We've now got this sort of angled thing, but we could still get at least a one litre bottle in these little carpeted things here. And in this centre bit here, we have another two cup holders with the fold down armrest, which is pretty much level with the door, as well as door grabs. Even the driver gets one um, just to make this sort of utility, but probably not quite as luxe as you would expect for the top end golf. The combined fuel consumption figure for the Golf R hatch in Australia is 7.8 litres per 100 kilometres, with the wagon being 7.4 litres per 100 kilometres. The warranty for Volkswagen in this country is five years or unlimited kilometres, while the recommended servicing intervals for these models is every 12 months or 15,000 Ks, with the five year service plan costing $3,000 for both the hatch and the wagon. Over the past 12 months, the median budget direct customer has paid $920 to comprehensively insure a Volkswagen Golf in Australia. However, everybody's situation is different and your premium will vary based on things insurers take into account like where you live, your driving history and whether you garage your car. I think the first thing that hits home the most about the new generation Golf R is just how sporty it is. Like with its new sport drive mode that it defaults to, every time you start up the car it has a firmness that it kind of had before but was accessible by modes i think even in comfort this golf r is a firmer a more focused hot hatch than it was before obviously with the engine tune it now has 235 kilowatts instead of 213 uh, it's 4.8 seconds to 100 the Australian R performance package doesn't bring the elevated top speed, so ours is still limited at 250, it's not 270 like the European car, but again, that's completely academic here because we all know our speed limits are ridiculously restricted. So that's why you come to somewhere like this at Sydney Motorsport Park. The ease of being able to access the modes too, like by hitting the R button on the steering wheel here and instantly bringing up the whole lot on the dash here. Comfort, sport, race, drift, special, that was tuned at the Nürburgring, but doesn't work as well here as you might think, and individual are all there. Like the new Tiguan R, individual also lets you tune the engine tune to actually select pure, so you don't have to have the synthesized induction sound that comes from the base of the dashboard there and actually really does quite an effective job of feeling like you're hearing more volume from the rear than you would think but when it's off you can hear all the exhaust blurting so love that that's why you buy cars like this up until though the 7.5 Golf R. I don't think that the Golf R has ever really bought that much more than the GDI. I think for many years, in my opinion, the GDI has been a more involving and more fun car. But now, with that twin clutch rear diff, it brings an element of dynamism and involvement that the Golf R, up until the Mark 7.5, never had really. This time, it is now a clear elevation beyond its predecessors and is the only car in the VAG group currently that shares that other than with the Tiguan R, with the Audi RS3. The Audi S3 still has the old Haldex system, and while it's really competent, it doesn't have the movement that this car does in tight corners. Tracks like this, where the brakes in this Golf R are really quite strong, it feels lower to the ground, more involving and more agile, with more of a pivot to the chassis than the Tiguan R has, but 
this is a fast sweeping track. We're not using the inner bit there with the very tight corners. We've only been using the north circuit. And while you can still feel the rear diff adjusting the drive to the outside to point the nose into a corner, in fact, you gas it in a corner like this, like the corner under the straight, and it just meh, goes in, it's great. But it really needs a twisty road to bring out the best in that because it's that change of direction in tight stuff where you can really gas the Golf R. Like coming out of a T-junction, you can sit there and boot it and it just goes, just kind of pivots the tail around. It will even slide itself a little bit sideways. You can kind of have the headroom to do that too because with ESC Sport, it will let you do that. Now, even with the synthesized sound, the Golf R does sound good, but I think where the electronic things start to work against this car until you really master them is with this touchscreen system here. I kind of feel like if you need to read the manual in modern times to work out something, which you absolutely do in this to get the best out of it, then it's probably a little bit complex, and it is. To get ESC Sport, Previously, you have to go through multiple screens, if you didn't know this cheat sheet, to find brakes in the vehicle setup, and then you hit brakes, and then you bring ASC. But if you swipe down from the top, you can choose the four best settings. And here we've got turning off start-stop, ASC system, yep, ASC sport straight away. Uh, that stuff makes sense, but only once you've configured it. And so, even though the interior of this car is really quite high end, the seats are great, the driving position is excellent and all that sort of stuff, I think that some of this is a step too far and does require acclimatisation. You do get used to it over time, but I don't know whether it's as pure as probably people who like performance cars would want it to be. You need to be very much of the iPad age to want to have that over something that's simpler. As for the livability of the Golf R, it's a grainier car than before. It doesn't ride as comfortably in comfort, although it does ride acceptably well. You can drive it around in sport all the time, which is what it accepts as its default mode, but it does have a fair degree amount of firmness. On low speeds over concrete joins, it is really quite abrupt. It can crash through a bit in the suspension if you hit big bumps, and there's a lot of those around Sydney at the moment after all the rain. And the steering, while it's really quick off center, like you don't have to turn it very far to get it to start turning. At that point there, there isn't really that much amount of natural feel. The feel in this car that you're getting is all from what the chassis is feeding to you. And the tighter the corner and the more challenging the angle, I think the greater the Golf R's excellence. When you think about the fact that the Golf R DSG costs only $65,990 before on road costs, and I say only because even though that is still a substantial amount of money, for what this car offers, I don't think that that's actually really that bad, certainly not compared to other German and European competitors. The only option you really need to add, in my opinion, is the $1,000 Harman Kardon stereo, and here you go, you've got that. And you have the option of the wagon when we eventually get to test that. Is it a shame that it doesn't come with a manual in Australia or even in Europe? It's only available in the US and Canada. I suppose no. The wet clutch seven speed is a really great transmission now. It's pretty strong. It adds the blurting to the car. This car has a whole lot of character, but this is the most uncompromising Golf R yet. It has a tremendous amount of bandwidth when it comes to agility, especially in tight corners, and it adds an extra layer of comfort with those great seats and that beautiful trim, but it is also a very focused car. Like, you need to be willing to put up with a pretty firm ride, and you also need to be willing to try and master all those electronic systems inside the car. This is not really a car for the faint-hearted, even though it is a car that is designed to feel fun for everybody. So there is a sweet spot in there. You've just got to try and find it. If you haven't subscribed, please do so below the video. Hit the notification bell and leave a comment on what you think about the Volkswagen Golf R or about chasing cars. If you'd like to test drive one or download a brochure, please click the link below the video. Thanks for watching.